Good morning, people of the grid. It's the weekend, and I thought, you know what? I just dropped off my daughter Amelia at volleyball practice, and uh, they were they had an hour and fifteen minutes of practice. So I thought while she's doing that, I'm gonna come here and supercharge up, and then I'll go back and watch the games they're playing today. And then while I started supercharging, I thought, ooh, I'm gonna start a new spreadsheet to track what would it cost to supercharge. So today's my first entry, my first kind of log entry in the uh, table. And what I'll do is over time, as I supercharge at different battery states, at different temperature states, I'll just populate the table so that we can see the how much it would cost to charge. Because as we all know that Tesla now is charging for supercharger use in the US, in Canada, other parts of the world. So what I'll do is I'll break it down, what I show up with at the charger as far as rated range in kilometers, and then you can convert that to miles if you like. But more importantly, the percentage of battery state that I show up at. And then I'll do the charge and I'll time how much time I spend above the 60 kilowatts because they charge, that's tier two. And then how much time I spend it below the 60 kilowatts that'll be tier one. So that's what I'm going to track. The other thing that's interesting that will definitely affect the data, and I saw it today, <coughs> I drove about 35 minutes from home to here. The car was outside, so I didn't charge at home, and the battery was definitely cold because when I plugged in, the max feed I was getting was 75 kilowatt, and normally I see it go up to 115, 116 when I get here with a warm battery. So that's all kind of going to be tracked. I'll just, you know, put in was it a cold battery or a warm battery based on what I know about the car and then we'll see some interesting data. So uh, once I'm done here, I'll give you an update on what the first data entry uh, shows as far as what it would, would have cost. And then I'll also throw in, because I know what my energy rates are at home, what it would cost to charge at home. Spoiler alert, it's always gonna be cheaper for any of us to charge at home. So really supercharger use is just for if you need it or for long distance travel, um, yeah. So here's the first set of data. All right, guys, the first set of data is in. I've done the charge here. Now, remember, I showed up with a cold battery. That definitely has an impact because what the supercharger does and what the car's BMS does is it says, hold off on the fast charge. I need to warm up the battery to a nominal temperature, and then we can start charging it up. It, that means it's going to take you a lot longer. That means, especially in Canada, where they're charging per minute, it's going to cost you a little more. So if you can arrive at a supercharger after you've driven for a good hour or so, given a chance uh, for the battery to warm up, uh, which I didn't do today. But anyways, I showed up here at the supercharger. I had 87 kilometers uh, remaining of rated range. My battery percentage was at 21%. I plug in, I start charging. My time in tier uh, two, which is the more expensive tier. So that's above 60 kilowatt per hour. Uh, charge rate and I sat mostly around 75 to 77 and by then the battery got warmed up by then it was half full and then it just stayed there and started going down towards the 60. So in that tier I spent 23 minutes. Uh, the charge for that in Canadian was $10.12 and then we flipped into tier one where it's at 60 kilowatt hours or less and I spent 98 minutes in there. I wanted to go right to 100% and it takes forever. When you're charging above 80% that that time above 80 takes a long time. So if you don't need it, that's where you can save yourself some money. But anyways, I took it to 100. I wanted the pack to rebalance. I haven't done that for a long time. So going up to 100, I spent an extra 98 minutes in tier one, which cost me or would have cost me $21.56. Um, that's a total supercharger cost for today's charge for me of uh, $31.68, that's what I'd be paying Tesla. Now, my rated range that I got out of that is 415 kilometers, not bad. Um, you know, so it's still half the price of gas um, or even less depending on where you're buying gas. Now take a look if I was to do this charge at home. At home, uh, where I pay 0 0.678 cents per kilowatt hour, it would have only cost me uh, $3.95. So $3.95 charging at home versus $31.68 charging at the supercharger. There you are.
you make your choice from there, I guess. So, like I said, as uh, as I go forward through my uh, my charges, I'll just start tracking this data, and then once I get a, a relevant data set of like 10 or 20 odd charges, I'll share the information with you guys. I think what'll be really good for especially new owners of Model 3s or even Model S's or Model X's is you can look at this and kind of get a sense of, okay, so if I if I show up with this battery range, you know, this percentage, this is roughly how much it would it would cost me. Um, I've got I'll add the rates uh, for U.S. Uh, below, but really, um, if you're in the U.S., your your rates per minute are different than in Canada. Uh, for tier two, which is the more expensive tier in the U.S., it's going to be 26 U.S. cents uh, per minute, or 13 U.S. cents for below 60 and below for tier one. And then for various regions in the U.S. where they do like Canada, where or sorry, where they where not like Canada, but where they're able to charge per kilowatt hour, that'll just be a flat rate of 28 U.S. cents per kilowatt hour. The other thing to keep in mind is idle fees. Now, just to be clear, I'm here in Canada. Idle fees here, and this is right off the Tesla website, are 50 cents per minute. So that's if I get my car fully charged and I just leave it parked here. Um, those idle fees will be 50 cents per minute. Now, those idle fees kick in when the when the uh, charging site is half full or more. Um, the other thing that's interesting is, let's say that it is fully, completely full. Every stall is occupied, including me being idle. At that, in that state, my charges will double. So Tesla will charge double the idle fees. Um, in Canada, idle fees are 65 cents per minute. Uh, if the station is full, it doubles to $1.30. In the U.S., the idle fees are 50 cents per minute. If it's full, it'll double to a dollar. That's a pretty big deal. That, I think, is awesome because that means people will be much less likely to leave their cars sitting here unattended. This is something that every charge site should do, whether it's a Tesla one or even an L3, a Chatham or an L2. If your electric vehicle is sitting there full and not charging but plugged in and taking a spot from somebody else who needs it, you know, I, I think you should be charged for that. So that's a fair that's a fair system because we want people to move on. We don't when we used to drive gas cars, and for those of you that still do, we don't go to the gas station and park our car there and then fill up and then walk away and go for a coffee and lunch and come back an hour and a half later while your car is taking up a spot at the pump so that no one can char uh, fill up. We don't do that. Um, and we shouldn't do it here at the EV station either. So that's my public service announcement. Hope you like that. If you have any questions, let me know. Like I said, I'm going to start tracking this data over time. Um, somehow, some way, I'll probably make this little spreadsheet available, but you can see um, from the video here, it, it, it's not that complicated. It's very simple to build. Um, and it's a really, really cool way to track kind of what your spend is. I am all about tracking where we're spending our money. So this helps me. All right, guys, catch up with you next time. Micer out.